Hi, this is Aaron Young, Chairman of Laughlin Associates, where for over 50 years we've been helping business owners like you start, grow, and profit from their business. And uh, today we're talking about common mistakes with LLCs. Limited liability companies have become wildly popular. I'd say probably close to 70% of the entities that we're forming for customers now are LLCs. But a lot of people are making mistakes with LLCs and the three big ones are what I want to talk about right now. The first one is one member LLCs or single member LLCs. First of all, a lot of folks believe that, um, well, my spouse and I both have the company, so we're not a single member LLC. Incorrect. Households, you, your, your official marriage, so not life partners, but a legally wedded couple is considered one member of an LLC. So if it's you and your spouse and you think that you're a two member LLC, that's wrong. Now, I'm not your lawyer, I'm not your accountant. You can cross check what I'm telling you, but virtually in every situation, couples are considered one member of an LLC. And the challenge with a one member LLC is this, limited liability was originally organized to mean my liability is limited to just what I have in the business. So if you and I are both members of this LLC, you can't lose your stuff because I have a personal problem. Or if the LLC has a problem, um, your problem doesn't bleed over into my estate. It, the LLC design was designed to replace general partnerships where everybody shared equally in the liability. In this case, I can only lose what's mine. Um, if somebody comes to get your stuff, they can't also take mine and vice versa. So when you're a one member LLC, it's only you. Only, the only thing that can be gone is your stuff. The only person who can be responsible is you. And so single member LLCs don't really create a lot of separation between you and the company. Single member LLCs are very dynamic for owning assets like real estate or oil and gas leases. But as an operating business, a single member LLC does not give you the same level of separation, which is what these entities are designed to do. Separate you, the human, the shareholder, from the activity of the business. You don't really get that in, a, in as strong a way in a single member LLC. Um, if you have two members, if it's you and your friend, you and your business partner, you and your adult child, or your parent, that's all good, but single member LLCs, that separation is a risk and it's a big mistake I see people making because they think LLC sounds cool, new, fresh, and they're maybe missing the boat on that. The second mistake people make is that they don't uh, do the corporate formalities uh, board meetings, minutes, resolutions, stock ledger, or in this case, it'd be membership ledger. They're not doing those things. They don't have an organizational meeting when they first start the company. Uh, they don't have an operating agreement for the LLC. These things demonstrate to an adversary, like a lawyer that's, that's suing you, or an auditor from, let's say, the IRS or from your state taxing authority. They say, oh, you know, this business is really just the alter ego of this individual because they haven't done things that a real business would do. And that goes to the third piece. Are you acting like a real business? Is there a separate bank account? Is there justification, usually through board resolution, about money that's going in and out of the company? The engagements, different affiliates or contracts that are, are being um, made for the LLC? Or are you treating it like just another little piggy bank for you. That separation piece, whether it's because you're a single member LLC, so you don't have separation, you're not doing corporate formalities, that shows a lack of separation, or not really differentiating your personal stuff from your business stuff, there's a commingling of it, that also demonstrates a lack of separation. And when your business is deemed to simply be your alter ego, they will wipe away that LLC, they'll ignore it, and they'll treat you like a sole proprietor, which means tax deductions you've been taking for the last three to five years can evaporate. 
uh, lawsuit protection you thought that you were buying when you paid your state every month or every year um, goes away. And all of a sudden, what you thought you had and the protection that you thought you'd put in place and the justification for tax deductions or tax credits that you thought were there for your LLC go up in smoke. Huge mistakes, but remember this, separation is the key. Treating the, in, the business separate from the individuals involved in the business, that separation is what will give you strength and protection if you get into a challenge, if you get up against some adversary. So those are the three big mistakes. Write them down, pay attention, and if you think maybe you're in the gray area or you've crossed the line, you don't have to go it alone, click on the link below, let's do a free consultation, let's talk about where you are, and let's decide if anything needs to be fixed or adjusted, or just if we can give you some information that will further increase your knowledge base so that you never make those mistakes. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.